Okay guys, so since I did a review on Camp Cretaceous, I've been meaning to do a, I guess you could say re-review, because I reviewed it on uh, Vlare, but the of course the video's gone, so I decided to do a review of uh, another animated show on Netflix that you guys may or may not be aware of, and if you aren't, I'd say go check this out, because this shit is legit. And the show I'm talking about is none other than... Uh, a show called Glitch Tex. Now, if you don't know what Glitch, Check, it, Glitch Tex is, Glitch Tex is basically a show that uh, Nickelodeon, it's under Nickelodeon, but Nickelodeon didn't want to show it on their TV show because it's either the SpongeBob, it's either you're a sponge or you've got a ton of sisters. Those are the only two cartoons that are apparently okay over at Netflix. Um,. And when I say you, you know, you have a fan, you know, it's only room for a sponge who lives under the water and a guy who pretty much has an entire fandom based on incest. You gonna tell me I'm wrong on that last part? Hmm. Uh. Anyway. So enough about that. Let's talk about a show that is really like under. Well, it's known, but for. Like a few other cartoons, it's known for the wrong reasons, and I'll get into that. So, this show, Glitch Tex, is pretty much if you put Men in Black and Code Lyoko together. It's based off a, it's based on the idea of this t these two go these two uh, gamers, Miko and Hector, aka High Five, who are put in who are brought into this group called Hinobi, which they thought was just a you know a game store, but it turns out they're agents who go out into the world to stop glitches that have come to game video game glitches that have come to life and are terrorizing a local town and have to erase the memories of all that so yeah it's men in black like i said men in black meets code lyoko um so this show um is a very nice and diverse cast um i love the animation in here first off i absolutely adore the animation in glitch text it is so vibrant so colorful and so unique. It is such a beautiful thing to look at. Like, um, it's also clearly made by gamer, like someone who knows his video games. The creator of the show and all, everyone on the staff clearly knows how to, you know, how their video game uh, lingo and history and whatnot. It's also interesting to see like um, some other like nuance kind of things, like C Hector's father you think he's dead like when they reveal it's like oh we got a dead dad situation no they go in a different round he's in jail yeah when's the last time you saw a cartoon having in jail dad that wasn't played as a joke yeah his dad um apparently uh was trying to be like a, you know pull an ant-man and fight for the little guy against a major corporation but the corporation got his ass thrown in jail so i was like wow you really doing something that like I, you know, I think the dead parent trope is uh, overplayed in the animation, so it's kind of cool to see it like, oh, the parent's still there, but he's in jail. He's legit in prison. Wow. And it's not played as a joke like it would be in most adult animation, so that's really cool. I especially like the just chemistry between all the characters. And also, speaking as a straight white guy, it's nice to see no, uh, not a lot of straight white characters in a show. This is the most racially diverse cast I have seen in animation. Um, our main two characters are Hispanic and Japanese. And our supporting cast is also, you know, African American. Well, Mitch is, at, I guess you could say, British. Yeah, he's British. And we have another character, Zara, who is... Um, uh, Middle Eastern. They don't really specify where in the Middle East she's from. They just say, like, she's from the Middle East. Um, so that was cool. It's nice to see a such a racially diverse cast in animation being action heroes. And they have such cool powers. I also like how they, they do have, like, a mystery going on. And I don't want to spoil what that mystery is about the glitches and whatnot. But how they play it and how they, you know use lingo and all of that it's really cool and it's never a dull moment and i like i really like that about this show is that it never feels once like a dull moment and yeah now let's talk about another thing that uh is kind of revel of why people might know of glitch text so miko <laughs> oh boy 
we got to talk about this. Um, Miko, if you notice, she's a bit thick. Um, those hips don't lie. Uh, and Rule 34 artists are having, like, they found their chosen one. Hot Japanese girl with a, you know, with a, some curves to her. Oh, you know the internet was all on that day one. <laughs> Oh lord! So it's you've probably seen, um, even you've probably already aware of glitch text, even though you haven't watched the show. You've probably seen it pop up in your new in your um, and not for not safe for work fi uh, feeds. Don't lie, you've looked, you've seen them. Even I can confirm nor deny that I have intentionally seen some pics of Miko. Of Rule 34, of the... Like, I, I don't go looking for them. They just show up on my feed. Hell, one of my friends was like, Hey, you seen this show? And I was like, no. I, I oh, Wait, no. Because it was Jason Voorhees 2011 who got me into the show. And it wasn't him, that friend, who sent me those pictures. He was like, hey, man. Uh, it was a different friend um, who also was starting to get into glitch text for all the wrong reasons. And he was like, hey, man. Um... Uh, have you heard of Glitch Text? And I'm like, yeah, I've been watching it. It's pretty good. Here, let me show you some pics. And I was like, oh, oh, cool. oh my god, dude. Come on, man. Why are you gonna ruin shit for me? So, it's not like I willingly looked at the fan, at the, um, <clears throat> fan art. But, I've unfortunately, uh, been, uh, I've been sullied. I have been sullied, and it's not fun. But, the thickness of Miko aside, this is a baller show. This is a straight up, you know, great action cartoon. The humor hits, the drama hits. Like, that episode where you find out that Hector's father is in jail and how he deals with it and how he copes with it really emotionally hits you. Um, I love every, even the dick bag care, the, um, the pile of dicks known as Mitch Williams will even get to you on an emotional level in season two. That's where the real meat of the series is, is in season two. The first season's just like, hey, look at all the fun shit we're doing. And then season two rolls in, and that's where you get, you know, Ridley, and more about the glitches, and more about the characters themselves. I'm kind of hoping more for a Zara episode, because she is totally badass. Um, but yeah, if you haven't already, don't go look at the fan art. Uh... Please don't. <laughs> or if you... Be specific if you are going to... Like, don't type in um, glitch text fan art because then you will have a pro... You are, you are in for a bad time. What I am saying, though, is go check out Glitch Text if you haven't already on Netflix. It's a super great show. Um, I think Nickelodeon was stupid for not airing it. Although, you know, knowing Nickelodeon, like I said earlier in this video, there's really only two shows that are getting around the on Nickelodeon in terms of animation. A certain sponge who lives under the sea, and a show that, whose fan base is really into a lot of incest. Again, prove, prove me wrong. Hmm. Anyway... So, you guys tell me in the comments below, what, if you've seen Glitch Text, what did you think of it? Just comment below, let me know, and once again, I'm Mr. Multiverse, I'll see you next time in the Multiverse.